Rolling back up, it is very important and it's crucial um, to really getting good at Scrug style banjo. Um, we're gonna start simple here by just using an alternating uh, thumb roll pattern. We're gonna be playing three, two, five, one for the strings. Okay, so the thumb's gonna be playing the third string. Index is gonna play the second. Thumb's gonna play the fifth. And then your middle finger is gonna play the first string. All right, that's the basic alternating thumb roll. We're gonna play three of those per measure, and then we're gonna end each measure with a thumb pinch. Okay, um, and it's gonna come, fill the same amount of time um, as those alternating thumb rolls. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. So we're gonna be playing kind of the rhythm will sound like one E and a two E and a three E and a four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four and. Okay, uh, counting is something that can help a lot. It's definitely helped a lot of my students and I would really encourage you to try to count this while playing, okay? I'm gonna do that uh, and count while playing just as an example. Um, also, I suggest that you listen and read tablature uh, each time before you sit down to practice. Uh, it's really gonna help develop your ears and your memory uh, of this tune, okay? Um, so the big thing that we'll have to watch out for is just our chord changes. Um, and all we really need to do is just make sure that our fingers are curled and uh, kind of hovering above the strings and really as close to the frets and strings that we need them um, in the air before we actually need them there. And that's going to lead to some really efficient chord changes. And with this tune, we may want to use the focus feature as well um, to try to isolate those changes. Like measure one, right, we're going... Uh, two alternating thumb rolls and then we push down our C chord on beat three um, and then we're back to our thumb pinch on the G at the end of that. Just isolate that and get that down. Do it until it's easy. Um, same thing for measure two except we're going to a D7 chord there, right? Um, now measure two and measure four are the same so if you practice measure two and get it down, measure four is yours. And uh, measure three well, that one's pretty easy. It's, it's just uh, playing a G chord, which since we're in open G tuning on the banjo, all open strings, right? And that might be the best place for you to actually start practicing this is just by playing that measure repeatedly. All right, I'm gonna count it off and then I'm gonna play through the whole thing, okay? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two Uh, sometimes practice can get boring uh, and injecting a little bit of personality and having a little bit of fun uh, when you're counting something off or playing something over and over uh, is important because practice, you know, it can get uh, kind of grueling. Uh, so anytime we can make it fun and make it more enjoyable for ourselves, um, that's a good thing. And uh, really down the line, uh, that's going to lead to some more interesting playing, right? If we get in the habit of, of trying to make things fun when we're practicing on our own, whenever we're playing with others, hopefully that will come out as well. Now, if you check out a few of the licks here, we've got some different options in the backup. It's just going to show you some different roll pattern options, um, but we're always going to be switching chords kind of at the same time. Um, for example, the backup lick in measure one, we're just doing a forward roll on strings five, two, and one, um, and then changing chords whenever our chord change appears on beat three. Sounds like this. One,
Anytime you are working on a new lick, make sure you practice it repeatedly a bunch till you get it down until it's easy before you try to play it uh, in context of the actual song. Um, the focus feature is definitely your friend whenever you're working on a new lick and also you may need to adjust the tempo slider to make things a bit easier. Um, if you look at the backup number two lick, um, for measure one, that's a nice little variation on the alternating thumb roll where we really alternate um, not only th through the third and fifth string for our roll, but uh, then we're also going to be going to the fourth string. So it sounds like this. I really like the way this one sounds. We get this nice kind of a uh, almost uh, melodic movement unto itself in the back up here. Right, that's what's happening with our thumb uh, as we're adding in all these extra notes. Right, and you can accent that by uh, hitting that note just a bit harder um, if you want to bring that out. Now some of the Scruggs licks um, contain a bit of vocabulary that's a lot more similar to what Earl might play. So we have some uh, slides and hammer-ons um, that are being incorporated as we roll. So here's what the Scruggs lick for measure one sounds like. One E and a two E and a three E and a four and. We're still kind of using the same rhythm uh, that we do in the basic arrangement uh, for this rolling backup. Now, uh, rolling backup works great whenever you're playing behind a fiddle um, or a vocalist. Um, it can work well also behind a mandolin or even guitar player as long as your timing is really accurate and as long as we don't get too loud. It's called backup for a reason. We need to back up uh, from a microphone if we're playing from a mic, uh, but also we need to back up and back off our volume. Um, and you can experiment with your tonal variation either by getting closer to the neck or even closer to the bridge. Uh, sometimes just doing the inverse of whatever uh, the lead player is doing the time. If they have a very mellow tone, we might actually want to get closer, closer to the bridge. But if they have a very bright tone, we might want to get closer to the neck, right? So we're just in a little bit of a different sonic space. All right, I hope you guys really dig into this and start to enjoy playing some backup. Um, try to memorize this basic backup. And my suggestion would be that after you learn to play some of the leads, that you kind of switch in between them. So maybe one time through the tune, you're playing the lead, and the next time you're playing the backup. This is gonna be the ultimate preparation uh, for playing in a jam situation. All right, keep picking and stay tuned, everyone.